Okay then my friends, so this is where we left the design in the last lesson. We made the grid up here, we made the grid down here as well. However, we now want to say that some items should be short like this and some items should be tall like this. And also this text one, we can see the text is being clipped off so that should be tall as well. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is go and apply short and tall classes to each of these grid items. So short, if it needs to be a short one, and tall, if it needs to be a tall one. So let's go over here, and the first one, we can see that that's fine as it is. So we're gonna give this a class equal to short. Now technically, we don't really have to give this a class because it's okay styled as it is. But what I wanna do is explicitly give this a class so if you wanna add different styles to short bubbles or items in the future, you can do. Now the second one is gonna have a class, but this time it's going to be tall, all right? And let me copy this because I'm just gonna to apply tall to a few more. So this one, basically anything with an image, but also this text one, because we can see there's a lot of text in here. This image right here, this is gonna be tall as well. So now I want to grab this short class and apply that to a few as well. So this div, because we just have a bit of text. And also down here, we want a short class and here as well. Oops, I've just pressed control C by mistake. All right, sweet. So if we take a look at the minute, nothing's really changed because we've not styled those. So let's go over to the styles.css and I'm gonna say main and we wanna target the short class first of all. And all we're gonna say right here is grid hyphen row. And this allows us to say how many rows we want it to take up. Now we're just gonna say span one, just span one row. And again, that's not gonna make any difference because they were just spanning one row to begin with. So like I said, we didn't technically need to do this, but then in the future, if you wanna change this to be maybe two columns and tall is gonna be four or something like that, you can do, we have that kind of structure in place. All right, so now let's say main tall, and this time we want grid hyphen row to be span two. So now we're saying any tall grid item, it's gonna be two columns deep. And this is just very quickly gonna make it look much better. Look at that. That's simple, right? And now we have a pretty good masonry style grid there. All right, so there's a few more things we need to do. We need to add some responsive styles because at the minute when we go smaller, it's looking a bit squashed. So let's give that a whirl, all right. So down here, let's do a media query. So let's give ourselves a bit more room at media screen and, and the condition is gonna be max hyphen width, which is gonna be 960 pixels. All right, so let me just go back to the browser. I'm gonna make this a bit wider. And then if I inspect, watch up here for the width, wait until 960 pixels. So roughly here, this is when we're gonna to start to change the design a little bit, okay? Because we can see that the pictures and the text are all starting to look a little bit squashed up round about here. So let me move that back out. And inside here, what I wanna do is take the main, which is the grid. If you remember up here, we set this to be a grid and these are the current columns. So three columns of one fraction each. And all we're gonna do is change this property. So let me copy it and paste it down here. And I'm gonna change this to be two columns of one fraction each. And now when we get to 960 pixels, we can see it goes two columns in width and that looks a bit better. Now, same again though, when we get a bit smaller to roughly around 620 pixels this time, around about here, it starts to look squashed. So let's do another media query. I'm gonna copy this, paste it below. This time it's gonna be 600 and 20 pixels, and the main right here, we are going to style to have one column this time, so just one fraction, so everything's gonna stack on top of each other. We're also gonna give this a max width of 400 pixels, and that's because at 620 pixels wide, I don't want the grid items to take up the full width of the page because they're gonna just look too large and wide. So instead, we're gonna give a max width to the main tag to be 400 pixels and that's as wide then as any grid item can be as well but we need to also centralize this so let's say margin is going to be 20 pixels and then auto left and right and then down here we're going to also target the nav at this point because if we take a look at the nav right here that's starting to look squashed 
as well. So what I'm going to do is come up to where we had the nav earlier, this, and you can see we have five columns. What I'm going to do is change this to be four columns, right? So grid template columns, and it's going to be four, like so, and they're all going to be one fraction as well. Now, if we save this and preview, then go down here, we can see it doesn't look great because this right here is just randomly positioned in the third slot. So what I want to do is I want to manually position this grid item. And remember, we can do that. So I'm going to say nav h1 down here, and then we can say the grid column where we want it to be positioned. Well, I want it to start in column one, and I want it to span four columns. So the full width of the header or the nav, if you like. All right, now, if I save this at the minute, then we can see it has a whole row to itself and it's the second row. And the reason it's on the second row is because these things automatically get put in the first two columns on the first row. And because there's not enough for four more columns over here for the H1, then it goes down to the next row. But we can manually select a row for this as well using grid hyphen row. And we can say, well, we want this to be on row one. And now that's gonna override the default behavior of the first two links being in the first row. And instead, it's gonna put this H1 in the first row, and it's gonna move the other two links onto the second row with the last two links. So check this out. That looks a lot better, right? Awesome. And so there we go, my friends, that is pretty much done. So now we have a fully responsive masonry style grid design. Awesome.